Hi, I just found this tool for crimping cables and I thought that I can make a late spindle using this mechanism. Long story short, this is almost completed version I think that will work. However, I am not very happy with many things and well, you will see. If you want to have a look at this design, I will publish it online. The rest of this video is design process itself. So if you are interested in this, keep watching and I will try to explain everything as best as I possibly can. First I saw this clamping tool, I was like, what? How does it work? Oh man, I like it. But then I got onto computer and tried to reverse engineer it and I got basically this. What you can see is, in this case, triple double hinge mechanism and two discs that are operating it. And you can see pink disc and yellow disc. The yellow disc is actuated and the pink is stationary in this, in this case. And the green arm that is extended into the space is hinging around its uh, red point. The, that red point you can see at those arms that are pins that is providing a degree of freedom for motion and it hinges around that and the blue arm is actuating the green arm and it basically changes the inner diameter that you can hold in those fingers, let's say. So this is the principle of operation of this mechanism. I did not see that tool, how it works inside, but I guess it's this thing. Compared to the conventional late spindle, this thing looks pretty cost effective for me. The only problem is that I am not really sure that it will work. There is no other way to find out than by trying it. Basically make a prototype version and try it how it is concentric and how it holds the piece and basically everything. But as we designers say, hey in the simulation it was perfect. One of the issues I ran into was that I was making this model in uh, in the work and I forgot that I have a different version of software, actually in this case Inventor. So I had to convert it to the step and then work with that. It's okay unless you want to make big changes, but in this case I will end up remaking it, so... But right now I'm trying to fix some holes so they are not there anymore and stuff like that. Of course the other problem is that if you change geometry so you lose some edges, all your constraints are gone and you must remake them and all kinds of this exciting stuff that I must deal with. So redefining the array and fixing the constraints Okay, now we are good. You can fit some large pieces into this spindle. I think it was about 130 millimeters. There will be somewhere measurements of this, but that's quite extremely big. Also here you can see some man with his lathe and as you can see in the glass blowing industry, this kind of lathe chuck is quite common, actually. So, here I am trying to find some flanged bearings. And by that I mean F series of bearings, but I did not remember that what was the exact type number of them, but yeah, well, Google helped a lot, of course. Now I am adding F6000 so I have 10 millimeters inner diameter, so I can simply bolt them to the pink board or pink circle. And yeah, in previous step I added some support for the yellow ring by extending the pink circle diameter, so I can use this uh, flange of this bearing to support this in uh, all three axes basically. Yellow ring will roll on the bearings and its axial movement will be on one side supported by the pink disc and on the other side by bearing flange. I think that I could go with skateboard bearings and 
Maybe they will be actually better than this flange type. In that case you of course must add some washer and ideally some low friction spacer and you may be quite good. But right now I cannot think about anything better than uh, rolling this yellow disc. And by that means securing its posi position. Because of course if you can machine that pink thing it would be perfect, absolutely. But I don't want to machine ideally anything in this case, because machining brings cost up, up, up. Okay, so if this bearing is flush on the pink disc, you can use only, I think, uh, 8mm for the yellow disc or 6 maybe, I cannot really see the numbers now. But that means that you will not have very much support for the hinging pins there, so I actually went out with uh, adding washers un under the bearing. So you can use 10 millimeters yellow disc. By the way, if this video is watching someone who for some reason hates metric system, I don't know really, I don't really care, but... What do you think? How thick are 10 millimeter washers? Well, I will tell you, it's 2 millimeters, exactly. So I simply put two washers together and edit under this bearing and I'm good. Well, I can really check that and how thick are imperial type washers, if there are some standardized imperial type washers, but oh well, whatever. I just wonder if you quite can use these washers for something and you can uh, actually predict how thick they will be when you buy them. I am not uh, designing things at home very much, so I have no, I don't have customized user interface and in this library is just big mess in the work, we have few screws and I go with them, so right now I am just using quite random stuff actually. Or I am browsing through the tree for too long basically, but whatever. Oh yes, and this is also all about, all what design is about, putting screws into holes. Of course, if you are doing it for yourself, then you could omit this step, but for clarity I am doing this right now. Okay, so now I'm trying to add some shaft to this and right now I really don't know. I have a few ideas that what I should do and I'm just really adding some shaft so I have it here and I will come to that back later. Uh, yeah, just disabled constrained sound notification. I, I don't know. Is there anyone who uses that function? So now I'm just calculating the price for the, in this case, aluminium rod for some reason. Well, the price is primary concern right now, so as that pink disc that I'm talking about is quite thin, actually it's 10 millimeters, so okay, that's about 3 eighths of an inch and when you're mounting something like this with that big diameter on the smaller diameter, you can be quite sure that it will be wobbly. I'm looking for some shaft locking mechanism that I can maybe use so that it will not be wobbly. And yes, this looks quite nice actually. BK50, is it? Yeah, BK50. And let's look at BK50. Just, that's just ring. Ah, so disappointing. But there must be something. And there will be, for sure, there will be. And yes, that's it. BK80. So the idea is that you can extend the screw so you will 
you will actually go through the material and on the other side you will have a nut and you can shim you can shim the disc by putting some shim things between the shaft oh no between the disc and the, the flange of this shaft lock and in this project actually there will be very very much shimming so this will be as cheap as possible and then as it will be built well it will be stiff it will be very stiff but so cheap that you will have to shim it everywhere and what i remember these shaft lock mechanisms are pretty cheap actually but yeah now i am thinking about some tube what's this that's 40 millimeters in diameter and this will be a thick walled tube idea is that you will drill a holes into the wall of this tube in the actual direction so the only problem there is that you will have to do it on cnc yeah you will have to drill the holes and ideally in this case you should drill the holes on the pink disc on cnc also well that's not quite good but maybe maybe it will be more beneficial than the shaft lock mechanism and maybe not we will see or <laughs> we will not see but i don't know before i can try this i really can't tell that's the problem So, in this case you must use countersunk, countersunk screws and this is why the pink disc should be done on CNC because if you do, if you do counter, countersunk wrong you will not always or you will almost certainly will not be concentric. This is 40 millimeters in diameter tube and it looks actually quite funny for me so what else can we do so now i'm looking for some bigger caliber tubes and yeah so idea is to use this sleeve actually on this tube or whatever shaft it will be the main problem however is that now you have not only to drill this on CNC and face mill it but you will you basically have to you also have to make a very big hole for the in for the outer diameter of the of the smaller shaft and I don't know this is this is probably a very stupid idea. I don't know. But it's... I don't know. Well, obviously, I cannot tell if this is good or not. And probably it's because I am not a very good designer. Well, yeah, so... Okay, so let's add some bearings. I have done one project in my work. I used some bearings that happened to be for the 40 millimeters shaft and they were bloody cheap. I mean one this bearing cost about actually 8 bucks or so for 40 millimeters shaft. That's about one and quarter of an inch you see that these bearings are huge i can i don't understand how they can make this bearing so cheap as you can see there's some bearings for i don't know for 30 maybe 50 dollars and
Yeah, this is product finder for lowest price and man this is this is not even ten dollars. Not even ten bucks. They are extremely cheap. Well, that's good for me. Okay, so... Yeah, trying to download CAD model of this. And look what I have found. This is open source glass blowing lathe. It's a Kickstarter project. This lathe is coming at less than 2000 bucks in parts. Well, that's fucking expensive. I mean, for 200 bucks you can you can get extremely big lathe where I live in. And look at that. It was funded. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I I would not tell that there are so many glass blowers that look at these projects and I don't know. That, but that's that's good. That's good, I mean. That's perfect. And there are some shots of this light. Oh, but by, by the way, this light is actually pretty big, but it can uh, you can hold what was this? Yeah, 20 millimeter stock bar. And okay, that's that's pretty sufficient for actually small things, I guess. But this has almost 10 inches radial swing. Imagine holding, I don't know, maybe maybe even five inch tube with about five millimeters glass thickness. It will be heavy as fuck, and holding it by 20 millimeters that less than one inch i i would not do that actually well but yeah and it has 24 inches between centers that's quite good also but i think this thing will not come not came absolutely close together and that means if you want to work with two small pieces you have to extend them and then cut them off and things like that so i i, I don't really know Maybe it's good, maybe not, I don't know. Okay, so now I'm thinking that this flinch type of bearings wasn't a very good idea, so yeah, this is all also flinched quite not well, but I'm going with this housing type so I can mount it directly on something. Okay, so let me make some board for this stuff. Yeah, step promoters. Okay, so the idea is that step promoter will be directly mounted onto shaft and it will directly actuate this spindle, basically. And I don't really know if this is good idea with what we have here up to two newton meters because that's not a very big torque. But but I think that for glass blowing this is kinda minimum what you should have. And for that cost that's absolutely perfect. But as I say, in the end this late I have no intention in building this. And I would not recommend it unless you want it really 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 bad and have almost no money. Or let me model this motor on my, I don't know, 17 or 19 mil, uh, 19 inches screen. That's very bad. Compared to two monitors at work, well, but whatever, it is possible. Oh yes, make that smooth. Ah, look at that, professional! 
Well, that's really bad. I don't think that I can connect this to this big shaft. Well, I can use some I can use some couplings, but as I want to this motor to be mounted directly on the shaft and that one bearing is basically a hinging point this will not work okay so let's use smaller shaft that's first thing and it will not be tube it will be it will be a rod okay so let's download our 20 millimeter bearing And now change the inner diameter of this sleeve to 20 millimeters. Okay, change the circumference of the bolt holes and... Well, this does not look very bad actually. I would guess it will work. Oh shit. That's bad. 